John Solider, and I want to welcome you to the next segment of the John Solider Moving Up 2020 and Beyond book tour that we're doing throughout the world. Uh, participants in the book have been from Mexico, Canada, the United States, the Dominican Republic, uh, the United Kingdom, Spain, uh, and even Ireland. So a uh, number of participants, and over the next few weeks and months, we're going to be interviewing uh, hopefully all of them at one point or another. We've already had interviews with uh, Foster Obusu, with uh, Hyacinth Featherstone. Uh, last week was Jean Carlos Torres, our, our young 21-year-old superstar uh, out of Georgia. And today we have the privilege to interview for you Mr. Tom Oldershaw. And Tom is a gentleman that has been very successful in life. He, he's had a number of different uh, careers that he's participated in, and he's, he's featured in this book. Um, Tom, I, I, guess, I guess my first question is, is, how is this book going to help you in your business that you're currently in? Well, John, let me say the first thing is I certainly appreciate the opportunity of uh, being in the book. I think when it comes to the book and effect on business, there's several things, but I certainly believe the exposure is really key. Um, just when I look at moving up 2020 and beyond, I think, and just to insert a bit of a pun, 2020 will allow me to focus on my vision with an opportunity to see the objectives clearly. Um, certainly, again, when it comes to exposure, let me recite a bit of a story from one of uh, John Maxwell's books. This, this gal um, was and had decided that poverty and homelessness was a, an area that she was going to help in. In this particular case, she sent out a number of emails um, got a few responses, but got a, a response from an acquaintance uh, business person that she knew. Um, they wanted to set up an appointment. Really, the gal was concerned with, um, gee, I don't know this person, but what happened was they set up a, um, a meeting in a well-lit area, an area that certainly had uh, video cameras, the whole package. The result of the meeting, um, the individual said, I will donate uh, $2 million to your, or no, donate $1 million to your cause. Um, she left with a check in her hand, actually. Uh, went to her boss because, again, it was something she was just getting involved in. Um, ended up the boss help direct, um, but also said, you know, I like your cause. I will give you two, uh, another million dollars. So she ended up with a million dollars or two million dollars in her hands. Um, and it was from just being exposed, exposed through that email. So again, I think anytime one gets the opportunity to be in a book, to um, be publish an article, or um, to be written about is, is really key. So the, the responsibility when it comes to that exposure um, allows you to really help other entrepreneurs that rely upon your enterprise. And for example, manufacturing, marketing, uh, distribution of other, of other businesses. So you're taking on some real responsibility. Um, in my particular case, um, a life devoted to helping others, making the difference, helping build a better community for all of us today, tomorrow. Again, the exposure in the book gives you the confidence to really step out in the community, um, let the community know what you're doing. But again, to change people's lives becomes a real, real key. Um, certainly in my business today, um, my key is to 
really help 20 entrepreneurs um, with incomes of a million dollars and change people's lives with probably 70,000 uh, entrepreneurs making incomes of some $5,000. So the responsibility of being in the book um, ends up upon your, your shoulders if you appreciate the fact that um, the time has been taken to uh, write about yourself. So, so let me ask you this, Tom, from, from a legacy standpoint, what did your family think, uh, you know, to see, you know, you published in a book at this point in your life, at this point in your career? What, what, what's the legacy part of this for you? Certainly, John, when it comes to the, the legacy part, um, that's, that's a really big part on my behalf. Um, I think when it comes to my legacy, um, and I'll answer that question in, in two parts, but my, my legacy, first of all, um, I look at blessing others with a, a hand up. My background certainly has seen me volunteer on boards of directors, um, organizations that help um, individuals that are experiencing poverty and homelessness. Um, if we look at the idea that I had set up the Older Shaw Making the Difference Endowment Fund, um, if we look at our, our mission and vision, um, certainly our vision is to create um, or to help create a better community for us all today, tomorrow, and um, forever. The mission is really to enhance the quality of our lives by enabling all of us, individuals and corporate citizens, to give back to our community by building a permanent legacy. Um, when we look at that organization, we look at values, certainly the values of, again, the um, endowment fund that I have set up. Um, it, it has several issues. Uh, one is to provide hope um, and certainly a key, key experience when it comes to handling individuals that um, are experiencing homelessness and poverty. Um, the second value is we want to empower individuals to change their lifestyle ensuring more children survive and thrive. There's nothing worse than seeing a child, uh, for example, going to school hungry. We want to build an opportunity that cares about people and life outcomes, empowering the poorest, especially women and children, um, to transform their lives. And again, the exposure in the book and the the idea of taking on these massive responsibilities is is such a great thing. We want to provide the opportunity to design, build a better life for family and loved ones. So again, when it comes to the uh, certainly the endowment fund, all part of the package. We want to help fund provide hope, improve conditions for individuals, families, and families experiencing homelessness or at the risk of homeless. Um, there's, there's certainly, when you look at not only the community, the, the country, the, the globe, those experiencing poverty is so, so vast. Um, part of our job is to raise awareness and uh, levels of um, poverty within the community. So it, it's, it's really key when it comes to the legacy um, with, again, the opportunity of building a business that is so worthwhile. Um, and again, the business part of it, when it comes to um, what I want to do, 
by 2026 is have the business contribute some $860,000 to the endowment fund. Obviously, in my case, I have a lot of work, but I believe with the tools in my hand and even tools like the book, um, this opportunity um, can be existing is really the key. I think when I look at my family, certainly uh, family members are all virtually entrepreneurial types, understand really the, the business model of both MLM or, or direct sales. The fact that um, you can get into the business with an investment of some, say $1,000, um, makes so much sense. And the return on that investment is just phenomenal when you look at um, today's business world. I think, again, when it comes to the family, the um, impacting people's lives now and forever. My young granddaughter, uh, who's 12 years old, again, through the work that I've done, the exposure that I have given her to um, the centers in um, the local community that help homelessness and poverty. She, in effect, has, has done several projects on her own as a 12-year-old. She firstly uh, raised some money for um, um, water projects. Um, virtually, there was occasions where she set up um, um, lemonade stands um, as a entre young entrepreneur generating the, uh, the, the money she needed to donate to these funds. Secondly, she has actually pulled the school together um, to raise products and, and uh, funds for a women's and children's crisis center. And again, through that effort, she had to virtually contact the director of education um, just a, a high level, a powerful project where she was successful in raising for the, um, for the, the charity, the Women's and Crisis Center. So again, when you look at something, um, again, the book and the exposure, the, just the whole idea of creating or being able to influence uh, projects of that nature is, is really key. I think the other part of certainly uh, family members, um, when it comes to myself, um, the inspiration story, um, sir, as, as an older guy, I do a bit of a bike ride that takes me roughly a 200 kilometer bicycle ride um, in a, say, a 12, 14 hour period. It's surprising within the community that um, the number of people that are aware of the bicycle ride and, and keep asking, when, when are you going to do the ride? Have you done the ride yet? But again, all part of the exposure. And the ride itself um, is really designed to bring awareness to some of the activities that are involved along with the fact that within the community, there is actually homelessness and, and poverty. Another part of the story, um, certainly when it comes to even small homes, um, I've got a number of people that are looking at possibly building small homes. Again, I think certainly on a global basis, there's a number of countries that have established uh, home, uh, small homes, not only for veterans, but for um, individuals that, again, are, are homeless and um, in the poverty area. So certainly, um, when I look at that whole package, the idea of being in the book allows so much exposure 
influences so many people. It is just a, a great opportunity to be in the book. So Tom, let, let me ask you this, because there's 35 inspirational stories in the book, and, and yours is certainly one of them, and, and, and what you've done with these rides, and the money that I know you've already raised in the past, and the money you're currently raising. How are you using some of the other people's stories to help to expand your, your organization within the company that you're in? Uh, have you been uh, able to do that yet? And are you familiar, you know, have you familiarized yourself enough with some of the other folks stories as well to apply them? So if you're talking to a single mom, you use a specific story. If you're talking to somebody, perhaps who's an immigrant, you use a specific story, et cetera. If you can elaborate on that for a moment. I think, again, when it comes to um, certainly stories, um, not only the, your own story is um, gives credibility, gives influence, but certainly when it comes to the book, again, um, the opportunity to use the book uh, to point out that, no, this person has done it, that person has done it. You have the full capability of building a business uh, for you. The fact, I think it allows certainly credibility um, the, the, the exposure you get in any article, in any magazine, in any, in certainly the book allows the MLM industry allows certainly, um, myself, um, as an entrepreneur to really add the credibility that's necessary to get behind um, your my work. The fact that, um, again, I'm talking in many cases right now to larger groups, um, a, the fact that you can show a book and say, hey, my story is in this book, um, and it, it, it gives certainly credibility to the words that you are speaking. So let me ask you this, Tom. I, I, I know obviously you're obviously you've been a humanitarian for a long time. You you've blessed a lot of people. I know there in your community, which I've visited on many occasions uh, up in uh, northern Ontario, that you've done some wonderful things. I know that work's obviously going to continue. Um, let's talk a little bit different for a minute. Talk to the, the senior citizens for a minute that may see this video. Tell them, your age, tell them what you're doing and how they can, without getting into companies and all that, just, just give them you know, a reader's digest of what you're doing to continue to build not only your legacy, but your business, and also how, you know, funding your humanitarian efforts with, with, with the business you're in. I think, I think certainly when it comes to um, age, I, I use a, a phrase that says um, something in the order of um, – when it comes to when it comes to age, um, it's mind over matter, and if you don't mind, it really <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, and that is really one of the driving uh, phrases that I, I use. I think again, quality of life. Um, Tony Robbins has a, a saying that in effect says that if you've got energy, you can apply it to business. Um, so it leaves the effort open to um, doing anything you wish. The fact is that when it comes to certainly the organizations that I work with, a government funding is not necessarily always um, upfront, and when I say that, it, there's a lot of work in getting government funding, and it's not a, a something that's always guaranteed. So the need for private funding is, is really critical. <clears throat> the idea, again, of um, working as a senior citizen, if I can affect one person, and get them off of the streets. And I, I have seen it and I have done it. 
um, the fact is that that is worth my my efforts. Um, again, I don't. I like a quality life. I do not like sitting around. And I think to make one useful. Now, if if I have a goal of raising a million dollars as a person of 77 years old, I think the idea of other people helping um, makes makes a lot of sense. Again, even if one person can affect the change of a life of another person, it, it just makes a lot of sense. And again, the idea of people saying that, you know, um, I just don't know what to do. Um, there's nothing out there to do. I could list thousands of opportunities out there that um, when it comes to helping and volunteering, certainly when you look at the MLM business, the idea of supplementing your income or your retirement is is well worthwhile. Um, certainly, um, when it comes to uh, retirement packages, as an entrepreneur, um, I probably haven't looked after my retirement as I should. Um, but again, I take on the responsibility that I should have. Um, what I'm doing to change that, again, um, becomes um, an entrepreneur um, being able to generate large um, incomes or expecting to generate large incomes, again, because the, I'm able to certainly do it. So, so just in wrapping up, Tom, tell me, we've talked about a lot of different things. We've talked about your foundation. We've talked about your business. We've talked about your family a little bit. We've talked about some of your goals for 2026. But just to wrap up, give, give, us, give us one last thing. What's the future look like? The uh, future certainly looks uh, bright. And really, when I, I look at the older show making the difference, endowment fund, the fact that it is a social enterprise, the fact that, again, in the future, and today being the future type of thing, I can help many, many, many people. Um, that part is certainly um, exciting. I think, again, when you look at the, the globe, um, the fact that you're able in multi-level marketing, set up a, a global operation. Um, that opportunity is not, or it's available, but a lot of people don't take advantage of the opportunity that um, allows them to really change their community, change their country, change the world. Um, and again, the legacy project of one million dollars. Um, I've and, and one of the things that's happened, I've been recognized within the community. I was um, granted the Order of, Order of the Spirit Catcher Award, which is the top volunteer uh, position or top volunteer in the community. And at, at around the same time, and I think that goes back to 2013, 14, around the same time, I was awarded um, a Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal, again, for my, my work within the community. Um, that is a key part of your life when, um, you now again, you, you kick around with uh, the key elite people within the community that have uh, Queen's Diamond Jubilee medals. It's, um, it's an honor and a privilege, very similar to the honor and privilege of being in the uh, Moving Up 2020 book. Well, Tom, all, all I can say is, first of all, thank you and congratulations on, on all the things that you've done and you've accomplished in your life. And you're an inspiration to 
those of us a little younger than you that that are, are are looking at what you do not only in your business but as importantly probably more importantly in some of the philanthropic things that you're doing and uh, what i've always loved you know we've known each other now a number of years what i've always loved and admired too is that you're doing it on a local basis you're doing it where you're seeing the impact of your efforts and you've got the community involved and, and behind you and it, it's, a, it's a great thing and just uh, once again, you know, thank you and uh, continue good, good health, most importantly, and uh, continued success in your business and also uh, certainly with, with the efforts that you're making to help other people there in your community. It, it, it's a wonderful thing and, and I know we all appreciate it. Okay, again, thank you very much, John, for the opportunity, the opportunity of the interview and, and certainly when it comes to moving up 2020. Welcome to America's Health Talk.